Hi, ladies and gentlemen. To do your color wheel, you have two options. One option is you can print off the PDF of the color wheel and color in the sections. Second option is you can grab a piece of paper and draw your color wheel. So I'm going to start off with drawing my color wheel. You've got your three primary colors, yellow, blue, and red. They're usually in a triangle. Then you've got your three secondary colors. I'm going to make those smaller circles. And that is also usually in a triangle, green, orange, and purple. And then we've got our little itty bitty circles. Those we call our tertiary or also our intermediate colors. So I'm going to draw our little six circles. It doesn't have to be fancy. If you're copying from my PDF, make sure that you also label your colors. So I'm going to label these guys. To remember where I put it. The one that's called violet, it's just a fancy name for purple. And then for these little intermediates, you are going to notice that the primary name is always first. There's a hyphen, and then there's the second name. Primary means first. Secondary means second. That's an easy way to remember who is the most important color to be named. Now these arrows that are in the middle, they just mean that this color and this color are complementary to each other. Yellow cannot make purple, or also known as violet. Just can't happen. And they're opposite on the color wheel. We call those complementaries. Green and red are also complementaries. Can't make each other. Opposite on the color wheel, blue and orange can't make each other, opts on the color wheel. And then these little guys, they're also got some opposites. The easiest way to remember their opposites is also the opposites that are the big guys. So yellow green is opposite of red violet. Green and red are opposites. Yellow and violet are opposites. So now that I've made my color wheel, it's time to apply my colors. And we all have a variety of art materials at our homes. I have probably, obviously, as an art teacher, more art materials than you guys do. I want you guys to know that whatever you have access to, it's okay to use it. Don't feel bad that you have a mixture or if you have bare minimum because you can make color out of anything pretty much. So let's start with plain Jane marker. If I'm going to color with the plain Jane marker, I can start out on that edge, making sure that I'm going nice and neat into my center. Done with my green. If I have only markers, I might have to do a blending with two markers. So I'm going to put my yellow down first, or my yellow green, and then I'm going to put my green on top. I know it's not a perfect position to be in, where you probably would like to have better quality control, but some of us don't have access to the specific color called yellow-green, and that will still work. If you have access to colored pencils or these like twisties, I really like these twisties, you can do the same concept. I'm coloring in as neatly as I can my yellow first. I do tend to like colored pencils more than markers when it comes to mixing 
because they're easier to mix. And then I'm going to color my green. And that shows more of a truer yellow green. If I feel like it didn't get yellow greeny enough, I can go back and play around on one over the other until I like the yellow green that's created. I want it to look kind of like a key lime. And this is my green on its own, all by itself. When we learned about tints and shades, we learned that if you add white or press lightly on a color, that makes a tint. If you add black or press very, very dark on a color with its opposite, it usually makes a shade. So let's see that yellow by itself. And the yellow over here by itself. So as you can see, both examples work to be turned in. You also can do this with other colors like our yellow-orange. I'm going to start out with my yellow first for my yellow-orange. And then I'm going to take my orange and color it on top. This is called blending, where I'm coloring these two colors together to make a new color, the intermediate. And if I don't like how yellow-orange it looks, again, I can keep playing with these until I feel comfortable with the color. I'm going to repeat this with my red orange, but this time my orange is the first color that I'm coloring because it's the lighter of the two. Usually when you want to blend, you want to start with the lighter of the two and then do the darker of the two. So here's my red on top of my orange. And I'm going to go back play with it to make it look truly orange and red together. For my red violet, my red is my lighter of my two. I'm going to put my red down first and then my violet on top. The reason why we don't usually hear people say red purple or blue purple is it just doesn't low as well off your tongue. That's why you hear people say the word violet, um, but it's not wrong to say blue purple or blue or red purple. Okay, and then for my violet and my blue, to make my blue violet, I'm going to start off with my blue first because again my blue is a lighter color than my violet. together. And again, if I don't like how it looks, I can just go back and forth to make it have equal parts of both primary and secondary. And then for my blue-green, this is kind of a toss-up. I usually like to go with green before blue. Because I feel like most greens are lighter than the blues. And I'm blue on top to get that beautiful blue green. Now, sometimes we don't even have our secondary colors to create. So we have to create them from scratch. If you're in that situation, red and blue make your violet. I'm going to go with my lighter color first and put my red down. I'm having to make it from scratch. And then I'm going to put my blue down. 
It's not going to be perfect. I know that some of you like perfection. It's never going to be truly perfect unless if you're mixing it usually with paint. But it will work if you have to do this in a pinch. And just understand that as long as I can see what you did in your picture, it's okay. It's fine. So that is how you make violet from scratch. To make our orange from scratch, I'm going to start off with my yellow first. And then my red second. It's again, not perfect, but I will be able to see in your picture that you mix those two colors together and you tried your best and you understand the concept that red and yellow can make orange. I've got my last two colors to finish, my red and my blue. Then, once I finish coloring this blue, my color wheel will be complete. When I'm completely finished with my color wheel, just like how we always take pictures of our work to turn it in, I'm going to take a picture of this work and I will turn it in for a grade. Ladies and gentlemen, that is how you create your color wheel. Good luck. Please let me know if you have any questions.